So I want to talk to you about the keys to putting your hands on the golf club correctly. And I think this is probably, you know, forever people have said, well, the grip's the most important thing. The, the great debate, right, that I have, ball position, grip, whatever. But what I can tell you is, is that it's at least tied for first. So when you start thinking about how you're going to advance in this game, get better at this game, you've got to put your hands on the golf club correctly. And what I want to talk to you about in this video are the things that I want you to pay attention to. Pressure points. What is that like? How we match our hands up properly. How the hands affect the club face. How the face affects the, the, the golf ball. Ultimately, the hands affect the shot shape. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to put my hands onto the club in what we would call a weak position. Now, I'm going to explain weak in a second, but I'm going to put my hands on in a weak position. And when I then grip it with this weak position and I make a swing from here, I'm going to hit a ball and it's going to slice off to the right-hand side. Not only does it slice off to the right for the right-handed golfer, but also, too, I lose a lot of distance. That club was traveling at about 77 miles an hour, but the ball only went 130 yards. This is my six iron. It should go a lot farther than that. Now, can you say that the grip caused the, the um, ball to move to the right? Absolutely. Can you say that the grip caused the club to move slowly? Absolutely. Can you say that the grip is the reason why we struggle with our game? Absolutely. And that's why I want you to understand how important this is to put your hands on this club properly. So let me first of all, I'm going to get a couple stickers. And I'm going to put some stickers on my glove here where pressure points occur. So on the hand, let's go down the line here, Gibbsy, if you would. On the hand, you've got a heel pad and a thumb pad. So I'm going to put a little green sticker right there on the heel pad. So that's where that goes. Then I'm going to get another one. And I'm going to put this on on my index finger in this second joint right there. Now, when I put my hand on this club, I want the grip, and this will be easier if I hold it this way, to be in line with those two pressure points. And I'm going to have a pressure point of this heel pad pushing down on that club, so it's pushing down. Energy is going that way on the grip, that way. And then with the index finger, there's pressure that's being formed pushing in an upward direction. So it's going up this way. So this is pushing up. And this is pushing down. And that's how you have control over this club. So I can take my other three fingers off the club with the pressure of that heel pad and the pressure of that second uh, joint, second knuckle of the hand. I have control over this club. So that's the first place that you're going to go is to that right there. That heel pad, you can still see that green. I'm going to cover that right up there like that. Now, if you go face on, what you're going to see is this. Go zoom in on that grip. My right thumb, I'm sorry, my left thumb is on the right side of the middle of the shaft. So you can see the lampkin grip right there. And my thumb is now on the back side of that. And then what I'm going to do, and you can see there's a little line going right here. That's going up. Now I put my right hand on, and I try to match those lines up together. So you can see those two lines are totally together and they're going up more or less to my trail shoulder. Very important part of putting your hands on properly is making sure that those lines go to that trail shoulder. So now I put my hands on that way and now I'm gonna make this swing. So now I make a swing now, what's fascinating to see is I basically swung those two clubs at the exact same speed. In fact, this one is 76.3. The one before that was 76.5. But the 76.5, which was faster, only went 131 yards. That one there went 160. So by putting the club or putting my hands on this club properly, swinging the club at the same rate of speed because the club face is now square, 
which is pointing to the target instead of to the right or to the push side, now all of a sudden I pick up almost 30 yards. It's hard to imagine how important that is, but it's a fact because that club face when it's square now has the loft. Six iron has 30 degrees of loft. When I hit it with an open face, now I might have 45 degrees of loft. And all of a sudden, my club head speed, which is the same as, as uh, this one that I just had, it doesn't, it's not reflected in the distance because the club face is so wide open. The ball only goes 130 yards. I square the face up, I swing it at the same rate of speed, and now all of a sudden it goes 160 yards. 30 yard gain, huge, by putting the hands on properly, okay? So, I also want to show you how this is going to affect posture. So, I put that on the heel pad, sits on top, the index finger underneath, that second joint, the two hands are matched up together, just like that. And now, yeah, you can see those lines, that's a great shot. Now, when I come in to hit this, you can see one other thing that's very interesting, and that is, is that my left shoulder and my right shoulder are not at the same height. When I grip, poorly what was weak which is that 130 shot and I put all this underneath so now this heel pad is on the side and this index finger is on the opposite side so I have those two dots on the opposite side and I get in here like this now you can see the grip right through there that tells you that it's very very weak when I do this in this fashion there that grip disappears okay so right there and right there. But now go back to the shoulders because what you're going to see is the shoulders are now fairly level. When I take the grip and I hold it properly and I rotate like that, now all of a sudden the lead shoulder goes up into the air and the trail shoulder is down. My trail hand is closer to the ground than my lead hand, which means my trail shoulder should be closer to the ground than my lead shoulder. Well, how I put my hands on this club affects that line of the shoulders and that ultimately affects how the club comes into the golf ball right so when i go here and here and here and here now i have my grip like that now let's go there now when i hit this and that one there i couldn't even generate any speed so i lost 10 miles an hour of club head speed and i lost a whole lot of distance why did I lose club head speed? Because when I hold this this way, I don't get leverage. I don't get to hinge the club the way I need to. We want to be able to hinge a golf club, okay? So the hinging happening when the shaft gets closer to that lead forearm like this, that's a power source. Well, when I grip it poorly, I can't do that. It's, a, it's physically impossible for me to do it. And then my other hand in the same spot, it's physically impossible to do it. So now I have to bend this elbow in order for me to get the length of the swing. I create a shorter swing because of how I put my hands on the golf club, okay? So what we want to do is really focus on that heel pad sitting on top of the grip and then this first or second knuckle joint underneath and this is a wonderful thing for you to test hold that club out like this let those three fingers off go down the line if you would hold those three fingers off you should be able to hold this golf club if you can't you're not holding the club properly then put everything on put this other hand on and now come in here i'm going to swing this club right from here i'm not going to change anything and that one there 76.5, let's look at this distance again, because this is an important one. Again, I'm not swinging hard, but I was able to get 76.5 again. So a 76.5, a 76.3, a 76.5. The 0.3 went 160, the 0.5 went 160. When I did that with that poor grip, 131. So it's a really important facet of consistency, which you just saw, and distance, predictability, okay? All right, now, the last part of this is, and I touched on it, but I wanna emphasize it, the matching up of the palms together to the face. 
So when I hold this, I feel like my palms are parallel to one another right here. When I have a bad grip, my palm, this palm is pointing up to the upper uh, right, and this palm is pointing up to my upper left. They are opposing one another, okay? The opposite can be true too. If I go too far like this and too far like this, now I'm tying myself down. And you can see the palms are, not, are no longer facing one another. That's what people call a butterfly grip. What I want you to do is I want you to put this on there so that this palm, when you hold it, is basically pointing, like if there was a beam of light coming out of here, it would be pointing just off of your thigh at a dress, and then this one is parallel to that. And now when you get set up, now it feels like this palm is pointing directly to your thigh. And what you're going to find or feel is the trail hand almost feels like it's coming into the club from underneath the club. I don't want you to come into this club, go ahead back to the full one. I don't want you to come into this club where you're stepping on top of that grip or you're pushing down on that grip. I want you to feel like the trail hand is coming under the grip, okay? So now we're here again. Now, see if we can get a little bit added speed here. So I got a little bit more speed. Ooh, this was really good. So now I gave this one, this will be fun. So I was at 76.5. Now I'm at 78.8. So basically two miles an hour more club head speed, maybe two and a half, right? And that ball all of a sudden went 172 yards. And that was just with a little bit more. And I hit that more in the center of the club face, but that's just a little bit more club head speed. How did I get more club head speed? Because what I did there was this. When I have my grip held properly, now when the club comes up to the top, now I can let this set happen. So many times when you hold this club improperly, you don't get any set in the club and it stops up here. Well, when we get to where we have it held properly and now I take this back, now all of a sudden that club has a greater distance that it travels. And finally, I get control of the face. The face is square to closed. That golf ball had about 700 RPMs of left spin, which means it had a little draw or a little hook spin to it. And that's gonna give me a greater, a greater distance, okay? So let me just wrap this up again for you. What you're doing, the whole thing is coming from the lead hand. Trail hand, you're coming in underneath, but it's all from the lead hand. You've got these two dots. Let's go down that line close up there. That's right. So you got these two dots. One on the heel pad, one on that first or second joint of the index finger. You're going to put the grip in there so that the, the heel pad is pushing down and the index finger is pushing up. When I push down and push up, now all of a sudden I can take my hands, hold them out like that, and I'm only holding it basically with one finger. I'm pushing that pressure up against that heel pad. So now I've got the club the way I want it and go face on if you would Gibbsy and the toe of the golf club is straight up into the air just like that so now I have a good a good solid grip and then when I put my hand on there I can see a bunch of knuckles on my on my left hand there's a little bit of cup in that back wrist of the left hand but most importantly what you can see is my left thumb is on the right side of that lampkin grip or the center line of the shaft okay so let's get a ball in here so put that there like that and then all I want you to do is come into this grip with your trail hand coming from underneath so you're kind of moving it to say a, a 430 position with that palm and now everything is matching up together now let's go and hit one this will be this is a full-on swing And now I hit that one, that one, that's, that's the characteristic of a shot that I'm trying to hit, almost in the bucket, but now come on up here. And now what we get, and this is the fun part, right? Because now club head speed went up to 87 miles an hour. I got that leverage that I wanted to. The club is coming into the ball the way I want it to come in. And as a result, that ball speed jumps up to 118. Pay attention to what you're doing with how you put 
your lead hand on the grip and all of a sudden you're going to get control over that club face and you're going to be able to gain that distance, that consistency that you look for. The grip is the most important part of the golf swing and it's not part of the golf swing. It would be what I would call a fundamental. And there aren't a lot of fundamentals, but this is a fundamental. You have to hold a golf club to hit a golf ball. That would be a fundamental. And so to me, this you can master. This you can work on. You don't need to be out hitting balls to do this. You can do this in your home. Get yourself a, a glove. Get yourself some of these dots. Put them in the right spots. And then make sure that you're holding that golf club, creating that pressure out of those two points. And when you do that, you're gonna be well on your way to hitting shots with a square club face and maximizing your distance and creating some real consistency with your golf swing. To improve all parts of your game, subscribe to my channel and click the link below.